Welcome to Robot Geek 101, the serial communication video. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to send data to the Geekduino as well as get data back from the Geekduino. For our video, we're just going to be using the Geekduino board and our USB cable. This should work with just about any other Arduino based board like your Arduino Uno. I've got mine bolted onto a Geekduino mounting plate that we'll use in later videos, but you don't need to have that set up right now. So what exactly is serial communication? Serial means one after the other, and serial communication amounts to sending different letters and characters to the Geekduino and getting characters back. So if I'm going to send a message, hello, I'll send the character H, then E, then L, then L, then O, each one after the other. This data is going to be coming from the computer on our USB port, and we've got a chip here called our USB to serial converter. It's going to convert those USB signals to a 5 volt TTL serial line that the Geekduino can use. That serial data is passed to this main chip, the Mega328. That's the chip that does all the work. So from our USB port through the converter to our chip, we'll get data on a single pin. We'll then have another pin that we can send data back to the FTDI chip that will send data back to the USB port. Now for everything we're going to be doing today using the USB cable, it's all going to go through this converter. But you've also got two pins here, 0 and pin 1, that are tied to that serial data. 0 is the receive pin, so that means that that's all the data coming in from the computer into the Geekduino. And TX is the transmit pin, the data going out. It's nice to have these pins out and available on the Geekduino board because then you can use them with a lot of other things beyond your serial, your USB to serial converter. For example, if I wanted to take another Geekduino and attach it using the serial lines, I could have the two Geekduinos talking back and forth to each other. This would be great if one Geekduino was going to be a remote control and the other Geekduino was going to control a robot. There are also a lot of different peripherals out there that you can use with this serial data line to communicate. They rely on those character-by-character -character bytes coming in and out from the Geekduino to communicate properly. The serial port in the Geekduino is really important, and that's for two reasons. We've already talked about having data go back and forth from the Geekduino just in a general communication sense, but it also allows us to program the Geekduino. This Mega328 chip actually has a special program it runs called the bootloader that allows it to send special signals from the USB via the FTDI chip and go into programming mode, allowing you to easily reprogram over the same cable that you're using to send and receive your serial data. There's not much special that you need to do with the bootloader. The Arduino ID will handle all of that but it is important to know that if you've attached anything on your 0 or 1 pins that it can interfere with programming so if you've got something hooked into here you might need to unplug it whenever you program so let's take a look at the Arduino IDE the program that you're going to use to write your code and upload it to your Geekduino so let's take a look at the Arduino IDE the program that you're going to use to write and upload your code to the Geekduino you're first going to see this file that says sketch and a sketch is a generic term for any of these individual programs that we're going to write and upload to the Geekduino. At any time you can upload one sketch to your Geekduino. If you upload a new sketch it will overwrite whatever sketch you've previously put on your Geekduino. Now by default this sketch is sort of a bare minimum sketch, that's the least amount of code that you need to successfully upload to the Geekduino. If you don't see this you can do file new and you'll get a new sketch with that code that I mentioned. So when I verify this is just going to locally compile the sketch and check and make sure that it's correct. Now, like I said, since this is the bare minimum, there's no actual active code. So if, when I go to upload this, I am going to be making the Geekduino do absolutely nothing. I'm going to go ahead and click Upload. Done uploading, and as you can see, nothing's happening on the Geekduino.
I'm done uploading as as you can see nothing's happening on the Geekduino. We're looking at this code to take a look at these blocks of code void loop void setup. And these are called functions. Functions are just blocks of code. They can be used in lots of different ways. Sometimes you'll reuse them, sometimes you'll use external functions, sometimes you'll use functions you write in your own. These two functions are special because these blocks automatically get written run by the Arduino program. The setup function will run once whenever the Arduino is reset or powered on. The loop function is going to run after the setup function and it's going to run continuously. So once it runs its code, it's going to go back to its first line, run it again, and keep running it forever. So first let's take a look at our setup function. First we see this word void. Certain functions can have return types. Return types mean that whenever you call them they give you back data. In this case, setup isn't going to actually return any data, so we have void. That just means nothing, no return type, no return data. Setup is the name of the function. In other functions, it's going to be really important what they're named because they get called very specifically. And in this case, this always needs to be setup so that the Geekduino knows to run this code first. We'll have our open and close parentheses. Certain functions will have parameters. Return types send data out, but parameters bring data in. Again, setup doesn't have any parameters, so there's just nothing inside of here. Finally, we have our open and close brackets, and these define the function itself. So anything between this open and close is considered to be part of the setup function. Our void loop function looks very similar. No return type, no parameters, but the special loop as the name of the function. Now you're going to see these lines with this double slash after it. Put your setup code here, put your main code here. And these are called comments. Anything after this slash slash is considered a comment. The program itself actually ignores comments. If I delete these, the code is going to run just the same as it did before. But comments can be really useful. Think of comments like sticky notes that your programmer can put on the code. These can be reminders to change code, it can be notes about more complex code, it can even just be basic explanations of how the code is working or why it does, why it works in a certain way. These comments can really be anything. There's absolutely no limits to what you can put, just as long as you start with this slash slash. So now that we've gone over the very basics of an Arduino sketch, let's take a look at a serial communication sketch. Go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, Serial Communication, A Serial Hello World. If you don't see this file or the Robot Geek Sketch folder, make sure you've installed your libraries and sketches in the Geekduino Getting Started Guide. Otherwise, just go ahead and click on Serial Hello World. Once we've got our file up, you're first going to notice a big block of gray code. It's the same sort of gray as we saw in our comment before. This is called a block comment. A block comment starts with a slash star and ends with a star slash. It lets us do multiple lines of comments. In this case, we've got our title, a brief explanation of the code, a link to more information and some important functions that we're going to be using. Like I said before, the comment just gets ignored by the computer itself, so if I delete this, this code will run exactly the same. But having the comments can make all the difference when you're trying to learn how to program. Here we've got our void setup function. This time, instead of doing nothing, we're going to call some of our serial libraries. So we'll talk more about libraries in the future, but basically a library is a code extension that you can add on to the Arduino IDE to give you more functionality. Some of these libraries are built in, like the serial library. Because we'll be using the serial library, we have to call serial dot before we call the function. This function begin 
is a function that starts the serial code. So whenever we call this, somewhere behind the scenes, we're going to be running other code that we don't see right here to do everything we need to do to start that serial port. 9600 is one of those parameters I was talking about. So this tells the begin function to start at 9600 bits per second. A bit is a way that the Arduino can send data to and from on the serial line, and it just means that a voltage is high or low, on or off. We'll talk more about bolts, bits, and voltages later, but the basic idea is that when you pair these bits together, you can get bytes or characters. 9600 bits per second turns into be about 960 characters per second. So imagine that every second 960 characters can be sent to and from the Arduino. This serial print line is another function that will actually let us send data. So we've got print line and our parameter is quote hello world exclamation point quote. So everything between these two quotes is going to be printed onto the serial port. Both of these functions don't have return types, so that's why we can just call them like this, just as you're seeing. We'll look a little bit more later at functions with return types and how those work, but just keep in mind that just like setup, this would be void serial.begin. There's no data coming back. In our loop, we're going to do nothing. We're just going to print our serial data up here in the setup, and we're just not going to use the loop right now. So let's go ahead and upload our sketch. I'm going to open up the serial monitor, and we should see Hello World. If for some reason you don't see this, make sure all your settings are right. This should be automatically set to auto scroll. In the middle here we've got no line ending, and here we have 9600 baud. This 9600 needs to match this serial begin. If we were to change this to a different baud rate, we're going to get a lot of weird characters. That's because the speed of the serial monitor doesn't match with the speed of our serial port. Whenever we change our baud rate, it actually resets the Geekduino. So now we should see this hello world. Sometimes you might see the last line from your last serial print. That's not uncommon. If we open this again, we might even see hello world twice. But this is just sort of an artifact of the last time we ran the program. Now. What happens if we want to change this? Let's change this to Hello Arduino. We need to upload the code. Remember that just changing that and saving it doesn't do anything to the Geekduino until we actually hit the upload button and get this done uploading message. Now let's open up the serial monitor and we should see Hello Arduino. So go ahead and try changing some of the characters and uploading your own message. So the next sketch we're going to look at is file, sketchbook, robot geek sketches, RG101, serial communication, B, serial print variables. Variables are a really important part of the programming environment. You can think of them as little boxes with names that you can put different values in. They're variable because that value can change throughout the program, but the name will always stay the same. So we've got our void setup function and here we've got three variables. We start with this variable declaration and this tells you what kind of data type the variable is. An int or an integer is a whole number. The standard int on an Arduino can hold from about negative 32,000 to positive 32,000. In this case we're going to use much smaller values though. Next I've got my variable name. In this case I just have the name of A there are a couple of rules to naming variables. You have to start it with a letter. You can have numbers in them, so I could call this A0 or A1, but I can't start it with a number, so 1A will not work. I can use underscores as well as dashes, and any letter, capital letter, 
or number. But that's it. I can't use characters like at, ampersand, plus. So in this case, I just got my variables named A, B, and C. Next, I've got my assignment. And my assignment is just that. I'm assigning a number into the variable. So here I'm using equals, and I'm saying everything on the right should go into my variable. So my variable now holds 0. For my next line, my variable will hold 3. Now sometimes you'll see variables that don't have anything assigned, and these are going to get set to the default for the variable type. The default for an integer is 0, so C is going to hold 0 just like A right now. Now I've got my serial.begin, and then I've got this big line of prints. So just like before, I've got my print lines. Here I'm going to start with a blank print line, so it's just going to print a new line onto the serial monitor. I'm going to print another line that says print the variable values, sort of a header. Another blank line, another line that says initial values. Now you see I've got serial print instead of serial print line. The difference is that print line will always have a return at the end of this and start a new line with the next print. Serial.print is just going to keep on printing with no return. So all of these lines are going to print on one long line. So I've got my static print number one, A equals. Now you're going to notice here I don't have any quotes. And this is because I'm not actually printing text, but I'm going to go up here grab this integer a and print it right there. So this would be the same as if I did print 0 and it's actually going to print the value of 0. I've got the same going on for b and for c and I've got some more lines of code here we'll look at those in a second but let's go ahead and upload this and take a look at what we get. I'm going to open up my serial monitor. I've got my print variable values, my initial values, then print number one, a is equal to zero, b is equal to three, c is equal to zero. Just like I expected. a is equal to zero because I manually set it. Same thing with b is equal to three, and c was automatically set to zero. Let's take a look at the next block of code. Here I'm saying setting a to two, and I've got a equals two. If you go back to the top, you'll remember I had int a equals zero. And here I've dropped that int. I only need to define what variable type my variable is once. So after I've defined it as an integer, the program's going to remember that it's an integer for the rest of the program. So now I've got a equals two. So I'm taking two and putting it into a. Then I'm going to go ahead and print my variables just like before. In my serial monitor, I've got my setting A to 2, print number 2. You'll notice that B and C stay the same, but A is now 2, because I manually set it. In my final block of code, I've got C equals A plus B. So that's going to add A and B to make 5, 2 plus 3, and put it into the variable C. So if I look here, a is still 2, B is still 3, C is now 5. So nothing on the right variables have changed because they've been assigned into C. No matter what I do here, it's not going to affect any of the variables that I mention unless I put it into something and use this assignment operator to put it in that variable. If I want, I can also subtract, multiply, I can even divide and when you divide you might get some different results because remember we're using integers in this variable type we're not using anything that has fractions or decimal points so 2 divided by 3 is going to be seen as 0. Now in another lesson we're going to talk about variable scope or where variables are active but I'm going to give you a really quick preview so let's say that I wanted to take this line of code c equals a plus b. I bring it down here into my loop. and Let's say I wanted to do that c equals a minus b. If I try to compile this, 
I'm going to get an error. C was not declared in this scope. And what that means is that when I first called C, it was in this setup function. And because I called them within the setup function, void loop can't access them. One quick way around this is we can grab these variables and take them out of the setup function. These are now global variables. That means that any function or library can access them. Now when I go to compile my sketch, I don't get any errors because both setup and loop can access the same variables. There are a lot of nuances to scope and where and how you call variables. So definitely take out take a look at our programming guide if you're interested. But for right now, you'll just know that we're going to put a lot of stuff outside of these functions and keep them as global variables, like in the next example. Let's take a look at file, sketchbook, robot sketches, RG101, serial communication, serial print loop. So here we're finally going to take a look at using the loop with serial data. We've got a, ver a global variable. It's still an integer. We're calling it count and setting it to zero. And this is going to show us the number of loops that have run. In our setup function, we've got our serial begin at 9600. We've also got a header that we're going to print out once called loop counting. In the actual loop, we're going to increment the loop count by one every time the loop runs. So count starts at zero. Here we're going to go zero plus one, which is one, and put that into the count. So count will change to one. It'll increment by one. Every time the loop runs, count will increment by one and get written back into the variable. We've got our static serial.print, where we'll print this loop number header and then our print line where we'll print the actual value of count. Here we've got a delay function and you'll notice this delay function doesn't have anything in front of it, no serial dot or anything dot. This is a built-in function into the Arduino environment and it's just available without any additional libraries or any other code. The delay function is going to run code that tells the Arduino to do nothing for a certain amount of time. The parameter is 1000, and that's in milliseconds. So delay 1000 tells the Arduino for 1000 milliseconds to just stop and not do anything. The reason that we're putting this delay in there is so that the serial data coming from the monitor doesn't come too quickly. So let's go ahead and upload this. Go ahead and open up our serial monitor. You should see loop counting. And then you're going to start seeing this go forever. Now, like I said, an integer can hold about up to 32,000. So eventually, if you were to let this sit and count all the way up to 32,000, it is going to overflow and give you some strange numbers. But that'd be a really long time to wait. So we're going to go ahead and close it. You can change this 1000 value to make the loop faster or slower. If I change this to 100, it's only going to wait for 100 milliseconds between each line. So once I've got that uploaded, I'm going to open up my serial monitor. and you're going to see this data come out much faster. Be careful if you make this too fast because you can overrun the serial buffer on your computer pretty easily. So for this video, let's take a look at our final sketch. We'll go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, RG101, Serial Communication, Serial Read. We're going to take a look at actually reading data into the Geekduino from our computer. So our first line of code here, we've got char incoming data. And like I said, we've got a lot of different variable types. Char or character will hold individual letters. And this is what we're going to use to hold letters that come into the Geekduino. We're going to call this incoming data. 
In our setup function, we're doing the usual serial begin and serial print to print a header. Now we're going to go into our loop, and we're going to see a control structure as well as some new functions. A control structure is just that. It's a block of code that allows you to control how code flows. The if control structure is a really nice structure that allows you to check a condition and run code or ignore code depending on how that, fun that condition works. So this looks kind of similar to a function. We've got our open and close parentheses. We've got our open and close bracket. In the parentheses, we put what condition we want to check. And in our brackets, we put the run that we, the code we should run if this statement is true. Now, the serial that available, we'll talk about more in a second. But imagine that here I put 0. If 0 is less than 0. Well, 0 is not less than 0, so none of this code would run. If I put if 1 is greater than 0, then that is true, so this code would run. The serial.available function is a special function in the serial library that is going to look at any incoming characters from the serial port. When you send data to the Geektuino, it actually gets stored in a buffer, sort of like a holding pen for all of your data. Serial.available will give you a count on how many characters are in that holding pen. So whenever I call serial.available, I'm going to get a number back. So let's imagine that I sent one character to the Geekduino. When I call serial.available, it's going to return a 1. 1 is greater than 0, so I can go ahead and run the code. If I don't have any data in that buffer, it will be 0. 0 is less than 0. 0 is not greater than 0, so none of this code will run. So now again, let's assume that this if statement is true, so that these three lines of code are running. Serial.read is a function that's going to look at the serial buffer and take the oldest character and return it. So instead of returning the number of characters in the buffer, it's going to return that actual character value. We're going to use our assignment operator to take that value and put it into our incoming data. So like our example before, if I had sent an A to the Geekduino, serial.read is going to take that A and put it into incoming data. Once I've got that in incoming data, all I need to do is do a serial print with my static U typed, and then take that incoming data and put it in my print line. So let's go ahead and upload our code. Open up our serial monitor. We'll see type a single letter, number, and press enter from the setup function. Let's try A. There we go. It tells me what I typed. I can put in any single character, and I get it back. Now this is a really, really basic way to read data. If I put in multiple characters, it's going to parse them each individually. There are techniques for reading in data as numbers, so reading 1.23 as an actual value instead of individual characters. And that's sort of an advanced topic that you can look at, but this is the most basic way to read data. Just keep in mind that you will need some additional programming for some of our more advanced data reads. Those are all the sketches we're going to go over in this video. If you do take a look at your serial communication folder, you're going to notice some extra sketches. These are part of our Robot Geek 101 reference series. These sketches are part of our Robot Geek reference series. They're more in-depth sketches that talk more about the different capabilities of the serial library, and different functions that you can use to master it. So these are a lot of great functions once you learn more about the Arduino environment and you want to start programming your own custom software. For now, we recommend that you go on to the next video, the digital output lesson, but these will be here as part of the reference section when you're ready to learn more about serial communication.